I almost didn't build this system as I didn't like the tower design that most cases had. Luckily, I found this, the Cooler Master XB Evo window cabinet. It would fit my home theater setup nicely, so bought the rest of the computer parts necessary. Let's build this system. Taking a look at the build quality of this cabinet, it has an unusual design, fit and finish are premium. There are two large fans provided in the front for adequate cooling. In front, you have the power button, SGD LED to indicate hard disk activity, mic in, audio out and two USB 3 ports. Below you have the drive base and to the right are two hot swappable HDD bays. There are handles on both sides of the cabinet to help carrying it. On top is an acrylic window that allows us to peek inside to see all the components. On the back, similar to most cabinets, we have space for the input-output uh, ports and the expansion cards. Space for adding more fans are also provided. To the bottom left, we have space for the power supply. In order to start building, I will start this by first removing the top cover of the cabinet. This will allow for more access to the inside. On the inside, there are two fans provided, which allow for keeping the cabinet well ventilated. I purchased this case as it supports the ATX form factor, which is a big motherboard. Connectors for the hot swappable hard drive base are provided inside. Now let's open up the side panel. Inside is a box that has a 2.5 inch drive bay with and sliders for easy installation of SSDs or actually 2.5 inch drives. The drive bay slides in and out providing easy access to the drive when needed. Okay, so now let's get the power supply unboxed. I'm using a Corsair VS550 which has a power rating of 550 watts. This should power everything nicely as I'm not going to overclock the CPU nor use multiple graphic cards. In the box is a power plug and the actual uh, SMPS with multiple small connectors that go onto the motherboard and other hardware. The case has a bracket that holds the power supply in place. We have to remove this first. Then we slide in the power supply. Make sure to install the power supply with the fan side down as there is a vent below to allow the airflow. Reinsert the bracket and the power supply is installed. Below the power supply vent is a dust filter. This is a nice touch by Cooler Master to keep the dust out. Now let's get the motherboard plate out to set up the motherboard. The nice feature is that the entire plate can be pulled out making installing the motherboard much easier. To get the plate out, you need to remove the thumb screws on either side and it lifts up easily. This is how the inside of the cabinet looks with the two fans in front. Starting out with the motherboard installation, I purchased the Strix B250F chipset motherboard by ASUS. Let's unbox this and start the installation process.
The Strix B250F motherboard has a bold design with angular heat sinks and an Aura Sync RGB LED lighting, which we'll get into a bit. It is definitely cool to look at. It has four RAM DIMM slots that can run at 2400 or 2133 MHz. A Supreme FX gaming audio processor is also found on the board. It is supposed to be exceptional. I have to test the audio quality once it's set up. There's one PCI Express into 16 slot, another one which is into 16 but it can also run it into 4 mode and 4 PCI 3.0 into 1. IO wise, we have 8 USB ports, one of them is Type C. Display output we have DVI, DisplayPort, and HDMI. A PS2 port for mouse and keyboard, a gigabit Ethernet connection, and audio wise, we have discrete analog connectors and also a digital SPDIF out. This is where the processor is to be installed. So let's start off by first getting the motherboard onto the plate. We use risers to keep the motherboard from touching the plate below. The, the risers also allow the airflow from behind, keeping it cool. The motherboard is secured using screws that screw in at marked sections on the motherboard. Once the motherboard is secured, we install the processor. This is the processor I have chosen. This is the KB Lake Core i7-7700, which is a quad-core processor with a base frequency of 3.6 GHz and a turbo frequency of 4.2 GHz. It supports 8 threads and has 8 MB of smart cache. Included graphics is the Intel HD Graphics 630, which is good enough for normal use. The processor supports the LGA-1151 slot, which is what the motherboard I have purchased has. Also in the box is a stock Intel fan heatsink combo. To install the processor, we first open up the retention mechanism. Once open, make sure to align the small triangle on one side of the processor with the same or the dot at the bottom left. Once the processor is placed properly into the socket, close the retention mechanism and the cover pops off automatically. Put a pea-sized amount of thermal paste onto the processor before placing the heatsink on top. The heatsink comes with push pins which is easy to install. Just push them into the holes provided on each corner and it's done. Connect the CPU fan connector to the fan header on the motherboard. Next we move on to the RAM. I'll be using the Corsair Vengeance RAM, a single stick of 8GB which is at 2400 MHz. Match the pins, slide it in until it clicks in place. I install the I.O. template provided to the back of the case. This matches the placement of the I.O. ports on the motherboard. Continuing on, we connect the pins between the cabinet and the motherboard like the power switch, power LED, reset button, USB 3 hub and audio. After all this is complete, we now place the plate into the cabinet to continue with the power connections. Connect the 24-pin power connector to the motherboard and also the 8-pin PCIe power found on the top. Install the SSD into a drive bay and connect the SATA power and data cable. The fans are also connected to the power cables present. 
Once everything is set, power on the system. As I already had a version of Windows running on the drive from a previous system, it booted directly into it. The motherboard has a strip of RGB LED that light up in multiple colors. This is how the ASUS Aura RGB LED lighting looks inside. And here's the cabinet in a few more angles. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also click on the bell icon if you want to be notified when new videos are added. Thank you for watching.